Arizona Plus. With a penalty kick win over Texas, TCU has reached their first ever conference championship and have become only the second number eight seed to advance to the Big 12 championship. Ranked number 14 in the country, Baylor has had their most successful season in years. Leading scorer Dana Larson has led their resurgence. We'll crown a new champion today. The Big 12 championship is next. Absolutely beautiful day here in San Antonio for women's college soccer. We have a championship to determine here in the Big 12. So much at stake for both Baylor, number 14 in the nation, getting set to take on the Cinderella surprise story of TCU. Let's take a look at the brackets and show you how they got here. First, let's start. They were the second seed, Baylor. They got past Oklahoma State, and then a very talented and technical Texas Tech. For TCU, they only knocked off the number one seed, West Virginia, and then took on Texas and beat them in penalties. And welcome in, everybody. I'm Glenn Davis. Alongside me is former UCLA midfielder Jessica Stamp as we get you set up for what should be a very intriguing day here today. And these are two teams with two very, very different stories to tell this year. Yeah, obviously the first year for TCU in the Big 12 Conference. Pretty exciting that they made it all the way to the championship match in their first year. Also a very young team with a first-year coach. Baylor, very experienced team. So more of the pressure is on Baylor to finish this out as the number two seed. All right, let's take a look at TCU's resume. And a number of things here will jump out to you very, very quickly. First off, this is their first ever postseason championship match. They are only the second number eight seed to get to a final. And they only had one win during the regular season in conference play. Now today we expect them to be a little bit more defensive minded. Let's start off with a very talented player, Monica Alba. A Mexican national team player. She's been actually playing at attacking midfield for most of the tournament, but they're going to move her to the back to kind of help shore up some injuries that they've had back there. But luckily behind her is Victoria Arnold, a very talented player that's transferred into TCU, and she really saved the game for them against Texas with some huge saves in the semis. Alvarado, seven goals on the year today, expected to do it on the defensive side. Now let's talk about Baylor, number 14 in the nation. They've only been beaten once under Marcy Johnson. Let's take a look at their resume, and a number of things will jump out at you right away. They have never lost to DCU, and look at the goal differential, 48 to 10. They have not lost a game since August 26th. And I think right away we would go to a player uh, that is very talented with a very, very educated left foot, Dana Larson. Now Larson's going to pull out really wide and look to get the ball, take on end line, but also whip some crosses in and just use that powerful left foot to put things on goal. How about goalkeeping with Michelle Kloss? Well, she's been a part of that defense that has the best goals against average in the Big 12 Conference. And again, she might not see a lot of action today, so she's got to stay focused throughout the entire 90 minutes. Kloss has given up less than a goal a game, leading the Big 12 today. She will be tough to beat. Stay with us here from the Bossom Soccer Stadium in San Antonio, Texas. When we return, we'll take a look at starting lineups. The opening kickoff is coming up next. Beautiful look at the Big 12 Women's Soccer Championship Trophy. That is what they are playing for today, down in front of the Alamo in downtown San Antonio. TCU getting set to take on number 14, Baylor. Here is the starting lineup for TCU. Solid back four here today. We highlighted the fact that Monica Alvarado will go into the back to try and upgrade this team defensively. Yeah, they have six starters returning here to the TCU squad, but unfortunately they've had so many injuries that Alvarado, who's done so much for them offensively, has now been moved into that center back position. So they're going to rely on their super sub Schaefer to step up quite a bit here in a starting role. Day where a collective effort will be very big for TCU. How about Baylor, number 14 in the nation under Marcy Jobson? Here's her starting 11. Well, they have a little bit of a different 4-4-2 where they're going to kind of have a sweeper that drops off a little bit and roams freely in the back. That's going to be Heatherly who will drop off, and then Ludlow will push into the center mid a little bit and uh, watch out for a long throw, too, from Ludlow. She'll get forward and use that as a weapon. 16th straight year here in San Antonio at the Blossom Athletic Center. We are playing for a Big 12 Conference Tournament Championship here today. Kickoff next. Welcome back to Blossom Soccer Stadium in San Antonio, Texas. We get you set up for the Big 12 Women's Soccer Championship here today. TCU coming into this 1-5-2 in the conference. 
but that man, Eric Bell, has engineered their trip in the conference tournament championship. His first season after six seasons down at Florida State as an assistant and an associate coach from Akron, Ohio. Noted for uh, being a very good recruiter of players. Marcy Johnson, this season, former U.S. national team member, was a part of the 2007 World Cup squad. And uh, not only was a good player, but uh, also has clearly established Baylor as one of the strongest soccer teams in the nation. 16-1-4 on the year. They were 5-0-3 in the Big 12, ending up in second place. Of course, Baylor got past Texas Tech in the semifinals. TCU getting past the Longhorns of Texas. TCU in purple. Baylor in white. Good look at Michelle Kloss there in goal for Baylor. And of course, Victoria Arnold in goal for TCU. And we're off and running. Larson with her first touch of the game for Baylor. What do you look for here early, uh, Jessica? Obviously, it's three games in five days. Get back to that in a second because here comes Hoffman already making space for herself down the right side for Baylor. Crossing opportunity, in it comes and trying to throw a head at it was Baylor. So Hoffman with a good run down the right side, and I know you've talked about the wide game being important here today. Well, and this has been their mantra, which is get after them early, and that's just what Vic Hoffman does on that right side. She pushes end line immediately trying to get a ball to Slowinski there, who likes to post up inside the box and get it off of Larson and Hoffman on the whip. Hoffman, two goals, two assists on the year from Plano, Texas. Had a goal against Oklahoma State in this tournament. A header, but uh, we are seeing a very, very aggressive start here from Baylor. Larson with a wonderful touch, big space created, and the final touch from Hannah Gilmore, not there, but Baylor looks off and running here, hitting all cylinders. That's been their game plan all season long, which is being very aggressive. So this is another good look at the cross, across the face of the box. You can see there flying in is Larson, and that's why she's scored so many goals this year, is getting in on, the, on those crosses. But here's a good look at Gilmore, who had the first goal against Texas in the semifinal match. So she likes to get forward as well. Boy, good combination play from Baylor. Dragged uh, Smith Bonas, the center back for TCU out of the middle, and uh, you could have drove a bus through that space. What's the approach today for Eric Bell and TCU? They've got a number of injuries, as we mentioned. How do they handle this high-powered Baylor team? Well, I think they saw in their performance against West Virginia that they can control the game against these other teams in the Big 12. They can compete with anybody. So they need to control possession, slow the game down, make sure the tempo is their tempo and not Baylor's. Baylor likes to play at a very fast pace. They like to send it forward and uh, use their speed. So that's going to be TCU's game plan is, is make Baylor play their speed of soccer uh, and they're going to want to hold on to it as much as possible. Kelly Johnson coming over to take the throw. Expecting the long one here that we see uh, quite a bit in the college game. She missed the 2011 season due to injury. In towards the near post it comes. Johnson again now. Making Larson defend, which is not a bad thing. And Larson comes away with it. Morgan Lane tried to play it forward for TCU. There is a good look at a player to keep an eye on today. Dana Larson, 11 goals last year, led the team. 10 goals, 7 assists this year. Very skilled on the ball. Big switch. Lindsey Schaefer is 19. And that will be easily handled by Kloss out of Houston, Texas. Remarkably conceding .47 goals per game. Clock counts down in the college game. Unlimited substitution. In the first half, if you come out, you cannot re-enter. In the second half, you can re-enter once. So uh, substitution patterns of coaches, Jessica, certainly can make an influence on games. Well, and Coach Jobson talked about how she really does rely on her bench being deep, 
coming onto the field and contributing right away. So you'll see a lot of substitutions here for Baylor. Not so many for TCU as they've just been destroyed by injuries. So they don't have a whole lot of players they can go to on that bench now. And uh, of course we talked about at the beginning that Schaefer who usually comes off the bench and pro provides that spark for TCU has now found herself in a starting role because of all those injuries. Baylor off the throw now. Clock counting down towards the 40th minute. And that's a throw in that uh, doesn't quite come off how it was intended to, but it still is Baylor in possession. They'll swing it into the box. Beautiful layoff by number 10, Bree Campos, who laid it back, but the shot pulled wide. It'll be a goal kick to TCU. Much as we've talked about the Baylor offense, along with Texas, they are uh, one of the top defensive teams in the Big 12. Been a remarkable record of 16, one and four. But this here is good from TCU if they can control this to get a little bit of possession on this day at timely moments. They're going to have to. I think that's the only way they can compete, especially with bringing Alvarado back on the defense. What they need to do is produce more set pieces in and around the box, like that long throw that Alvarado can come up on. She did come up on that long throw and got into the box. So I think that's going to be the key is work it up the field and then produce some set pieces or try and get some chances uh, as you develop. Davis knocked it back to Kloss. Here's Kloss now coming outside her box, playing with her feet. She will bypass midfield. Long direct ball headed away. And number 26, Monica Alvarado. Keep an eye on her today here. A big name for TCU. Leading scorer has been dropped into a center back position by their head coach, Eric Bell. Alvarado again gets up and wins the header. Member of the Mexican women's national team. was a part of that squad, Glenn, that beat the United States. Hoffman now beats one, speaking of beating, towards the near post. And finally cleared by TCU. The target in there was Dana Larson, who came into the middle. Yeah, I just don't think there's many players out there in, in Division I soccer that's going to keep pace with Vic Hoffman on that right side. And she's finding a lot of success early. Here's the long throw from Ludlow. One timed out by Kelly Johnson. Still Baylor. They're lob it back into the box. Somebody needs to get up. Getting up there was Larson again. It'll be a goal kick to TCU. Goal kick, TCU. Winning the midfield is going to be really important for both these teams in terms of uh, keeping the ball. But again, Hoffman, a lot of confidence, takes on, and she whips it across looking for those post-up players like Slowinski and Larson to just tap it in. Boy, a huge challenge out wide here today for defender Rebecca Foreman, who's only a freshman going up against Vic Hoffman. Now, there's a matchup to keep an eye on. Hoffman already has gotten the upper hand here early. Bowen lost it. And here's Bowen now will knock it back to Smith Bonas. Alvarado drives it forward, and it'll be a throw in for Baylor. Three games in five days, fatigue, endurance. And I know we say this every year when we're doing this, but. Jessica, it, it clearly is a day where the, the strength of character and mentality is a lot what carries you through the fatigue. Well, Coach Jobson, you just saw there, talked about how it doesn't matter what you did in conference play. This is for a championship. Even though you're meeting a team again that you've already seen, it's, it's just different. And that's why TCU's had successes. They've put that in the past. They focused on doing their job game to game. And even though they only defeated one team in conference play, they're peaking at the right time. So Coach Jobson's prepared her team for that, uh, in not taking TCU lightly and understanding what's at stake here. 
Smith Bonas from Valencia, California, goes back to her goalkeeper, Vittoria Arnold now. Here is Alvarado. TCU have pushed a number of players forward here. Smith Bonas again. They call her the baby giraffe. Six foot tall. Baylor beat TCU 2-0 during the regular season. Larson is the target. Dangerous moment here for TCU. Larson's going to lay it across the top of the box. Beautifully played wide. Here's a shooting opportunity for Hoffman over the top. Beautifully constructed and architect in the attack was Larson. Hoffman's finish does not provide the end product. This is a good example of their relentless attack where they just don't give up. Gilmore gets a foot on it and saves it, pushes it out wide for Hoffman here. And I think this is going to be the beginning of an onslaught that Victoria Arnold's going to have to stop there in the back. Morgan Lane, Smith Bonus now. Broken up by Selby Polly. But you do get the sense, Jessica, if you're, if you're thinking about the underdog TCU, that it is three games in five days, and there may be just that little bit more time on a ball here today that allows you to get your head up and, and maybe get timely possession here. I think it's a smart game plan. I really do. I think I just think the more touches you have on the ball, the better you get throughout the game. And so if TCU can keep the ball, have those touches, and Baylor not have those touches, it's going to be great for them. And getting back to what head coach Eric Bell said, it, this is how you can control the game here today through uh, good moments of possession and sort of keeping the game uh, reined in a little bit. Well, and what's nice is they have proof of it being effective because they did that against West Virginia, and it was effective. So they know they can do it. Sarah Schweiss off the corner, another freshman from Monument, Colorado. Good defensive header. Here's Hoffman now for Baylor. Lays it out wide. A lot of freshmen in starting roles here today for Eric Bell and TCU going up the, against the number 14 team in the nation in Baylor. Good to play away from pressure here. Smith Bonas now. Number 13. Out of the back. Sort of miss hit that delivery, and it'll be a throw into Baylor. We just so want to up this tempo in this one. Lewinsky to Dana Larson now. Splits two. Here's still Larson. Trying to turn the corner on Smith Bonas and overhits it. It'll be a goal kick. You see a little bit of her uh, wizardry off the dribble there. Well, in the power of her left foot, she didn't have a lot of space there and she just whipped that across the face of the goal. So she, she likes to take on again. She's beating one, two, three TCU players to get that little step and look there. If she could put that on frame, it's going to be problems for Arnold. Uh, we love the players that like to take people on. Bell, Baylor. Dana Larson is so fun and interesting to watch. Had a goal and two assists against Oklahoma State in the quarterfinals of this tournament, basically tearing them apart. Ten goals, seven assists for her on the year. Pushing forward there was Monica Alvarado from her defensive position, senior South Lake, Texas. Also played at Mississippi State. Had a goal in the quarterfinals against West Virginia University. Am 
turned away from pressure. Give away from Smith Bonnell's dangerous area here. They quickly get it forward. And Alvarado steps in and plays away from pressure nicely here. 15 for TCU, Morgan Lane now with her head up. Bowen. Alvarado now trying to initiate the tack out of the back for TCU. Good ball down towards the corner flag. Flag is cut out and it'll be a throw in to TCU. So you gotta think, Jessica, 15 minutes in, they've sort of weathered the storm here nicely. I think so. That first five minutes was rather scary from Baylor. They're just throwing everything at that TCU back line. And to do that against freshmen is, is a great game plan because freshmen, they're playing in their first Big 12 championship, probably a little nervous back there. So, and they know that Baylor's favored. So I think that was a smart game plan, but you're right, did a good job of kind of weathering that initial storm. And if they can keep the ball, I think they have a real good chance to push numbers forward into the attack. Six freshmen in the starting lineup here today for TCU, along with two sophomores. So eight out of 11 of their starting players today are freshmen or sophomores. Player down right now for TCU. Came into the stadium uh, today here. We saw the head coach of the NASL San Antonio Scorpions, Tim Hankinson, in attendance. Hey, the Houston Dynamo returned to the MLS Cup playoffs for the sixth time in seven seasons. They defeated Chicago on Wednesday in the knockout round, and they have advanced now to the semifinals. Tickets are available for Wednesday's Game 2 against Sporting Kansas City. Also, uh, you can watch that game right here on Fox Sports Southwest at 8 p.m. Experience the excitement as the Dynamo look to capture their third MLS Cup. So uh, Eddie Robinson and I will have the call from the beautiful Livestrong Sporting Park in Kansas City. That is uh, an expected sellout. And what a rivalry the Houston Dynamo and Sporting Kansas City have. Opportunity for both coaches here to to talk to their teams. You go out the other side, then, right? So it's what they do that, but you guys have to continue to play faster. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Play faster. Yeah. All right. Good yeah. job. Good, Good job, ladies. Keep calm. We got this. Let's go. So it looks like Lindsay Schaefer just not feeling very well as uh, she just goes to the ground and. It's very, it's hot out there. It's in the upper 80s. So you can see in that top right corner that she went down to her knees and saw the trainer there tending to her and putting some water all over her neck and her back and trying to cool her off. It is pretty hot outside right now. And uh, so it looks like Schaefer's okay and will probably re-enter the match. And she's back on now. So they're back to a full complement of 11. TCU. Putting a little bit of a scare into Baylor there. So just kind of opportunistically falls to the feet of TCU, and uh, that's going to be important for them, too, to capitalize upon those chances. Any kind of half chances, they really got to make the most of them because they're going to be few and far between, most likely, with this tough Baylor defense. Wife is snipping around. Beautiful step over here, and off and running is Larson. Tried to play in Gilmore. Longer range shot takes a weird spin and it's collected easily by Victoria Arnold, a sophomore from Mesquite, Texas. Transfer from Arizona State, distributes on her right. Debanis. Dana Larson now picks her head up towards Hoffman. Second ball is picked up and off and running and flying forward here now for Baylor is Gilmore. Lewinsky's shot is collected easily by Arnold. We are at the Blossom Soccer Stadium in San Antonio, Texas. Glenn Davis alongside former UCLA midfielder Jessica Stamp. This is the Big 12 Conference Tournament Final, the 16th straight year. 
They have held it here in San Antonio, the number eight seed TCU taking on number 14 in the nation and number two seed Baylor. You win this game here today in this championship, it's an automatic qualification into the NCAA. We haven't really talked about that yet, but TCU has to win this. They have to win this game to continue on with their season. They are a very young team, but they would like to keep going for that. their only senior, which is Alvarado in the back, their leader. So they want to keep their season going. Baylor will no doubt be in the tournament no matter what. Uh, even if they lose today, they have a great record. And in fact, they're in the top five in terms of their record in the entire Division I uh, NCAA. So there's no worry for them there, but a little bit more pressure on TCU to, to kind of upset this team so that they can keep their season alive. But I would say, is it pressure? Because they didn't expect to be here in the final. I think it's emotional pressure. It's more about the team and wanting to do it for Alvarado and, and keep her career going at TCU. Well, free kick comes into the box. Here's Alvarado. It's fallen nicely here. They'll whip it towards the near post. Shot hits a crossbar and goes over the top. Arnold got a hand on it. And defender number six, Kat Ludlow, had a chance to put Baylor up 1-0. Baylor's so good at getting numbers inside the box and getting any kind of these chances. That's how they scored in the semifinals, something similar. The goalie punched it out, and they one-timed it into the back of the net. Almost looked the same right there. Just unfortunate Ludlow got it a little bit high. Boy, just shaved off the top of the crossbar. Often trying to apply some pressure. Victoria Arnold will have to have a huge game and goal here today for TCU. Of course, uh, she was a penalty kick hero against Texas. Marley Davis opening her legs up number four and the throwing will come to Baylor. Beautiful ball. So Lewinsky is going to get there. And had the game winner against Texas Tech in the quarters. Lewinsky's cross will be guided away. Gilmore is going to get there for Baylor, though. So the pressure continuing now from Baylor. They swing it into the box. Larson, top of the box. That is a beautiful hit, a beautiful goal. Spectacular goal, Selby Polly from long range, and Baylor has finally cracked TCU here. This is what's scary about Baylor's offense is even their defenders push forward, and you see Polly there with a fantastic strike, too much space allowed outside the 18-yard box where she could just take her time, curl it into that upper 90 over top Arnold. Well, a wonderful look from behind the goal, and how about that reaction? from the head coach, Marcy Jobson. The youngest of eight children played in the WUSA with the Atlanta Beat, the professional soccer league. And actually got a two to one win in the semifinals over her former coach, Tom Stone. So Baylor gets the start they want. So we would imagine now, Jessica, the reaction here very important for TCU. I, I think they just need to keep doing what they're doing, keeping the ball a little bit more and being more patient. I think execution's a little bit off. They're not hitting each other as well as they should be with their passes, but I think the game plan probably stays the same uh, with it just being so early and just one goal. They need to move up the field a little bit, though, with their possession to, again, try and get some set pieces, try and get some looks inside the box. So uh, I think the game plan should stay the same. They just need to regroup and then try and execute on the other end. Still plenty of soccer to be played. Go down towards the 23 minute mark here in the first half. Again, the count of the clock goes down in the college game. Big trouble here though. Looking for a second and a huge tackle. Save on it. Another chance here for Gilmore and another save from Arnold. 
They're going for a second is Baylor, and this time Victoria Arnold is better. It's a great tackle there in the box, but too many white jerseys just not marked in the box there. All the balls that are popping loose are falling to their feet, and they're getting these clear shots. So TCU needs to make sure they get numbers behind the ball and help mark up because Baylor just flies people into the box to help and try and get something on Arnold. So here's one of those opportunities you were talking about. They can walk it up the field, take their time a little bit, push people forward into the attack, including Monica Alvarado, who's getting in and around the 18. Smith Bonas will take the set piece. And it's a good looking one. It's forced the goalkeeper off her line. She's going to get a goal kick here, last touched by TCU. But it was a well placed set piece. Remember, too, Baylor's a pretty physical team. They're a pretty aggressive team. So if TCU can get some calls anywhere on the field, you saw there Smith Bannis take a great free kick from all the way across the half line. If they can get some calls on their side, then they're going to get some chances inside that box. Gilmore trying to knock it forward for Larson. So many weapons here for Baylor. Daigle knocked it forward. Here's the freshman. Rebecca Foreman with a big matchup out wide again with Vic Hoffman. Well, the thing is, you got to break that first line of those three players, and if you lose the ball to them, they are all so skilled that it can turn into instant benefit. There's Larson pressing again, the talented wide player. So this is what they want, these kinds of chances. And this is a great ball, perfect spot. Kloss does well here to get over top these back players, but it's very dangerous. It could fall to someone's foot. You could put it in if you've got numbers in there. So anytime you can put something in that area, in that PK spot, it's going to be tough. It was a great ball because it turned the defenders and forced them to go back towards their own goal and tempted a goalkeeper off her line. Keep an eye on the set pieces today of TCU. Oh, it's such a nice road to set piece. Sometimes brings you back in games, Jessica. It's huge in the women's game, too, I think. And we saw two goals from Baylor off set pieces in the semifinals. One is a long throw. Both these teams have long throws, so. That's really neat because you have an extra weapon in terms of set pieces to use in the game. Well, they're going to make a change. They're going to take out their superstar, Dana Larson. And flying off the bench into this game. Now, Larson with some great moments. Ludlow off the throw. <laughs> Alvarado to Smith Bonus. Alex Klein has come on for Baylor, number nine. Here is Klein. Smith Bonas went to ground to make the tackle. And the pressure continues to wear on TCU. They need to apply some of their own here. Tricks and flicks from Gilmore. She knocks it forward. Lewinsky tried to get turned, couldn't. You and I talked on the phone yesterday with Marcy Jobson, and she talked about the 
the character, the want for these players to, to be one as a unit, and how uh, closely knit they were in, in achieving what they've achieved this year. Yeah, she said that that kind of faith in each other is really what drives them. And they're all behind that idea. They're all kind of agree on what the mission is for the team. And they, she feels like that's really important to being successful is to uh, be on that same wavelength. And so far, it's been connecting on both sides of the ball, offense and defense for Baylor this year. That's what you want. You want all the pieces to come into place. And it, they're doing it here going into the postseason. So it's going to be exciting to see how deep they go into the NCAA tournament. 16, one and four, the only loss to Long Beach State. Baylor on the attack in white. That's a good hit with the left foot, not on target. But again, they're not hesitant, hesitant to shoot from longer range as well. They like to take lots of shots, and I think that's a great mentality. Because the more, more you take on, the more confidence you're going to gain. And again, the more shots you take, the more confidence you're going to gain. So young player in Campos there taking on and looking for a chance. And that's what you want from your younger players. Marissa Campos, two goals and an assist on the air, a very technical player. As you saw in that last attack, good example of it. Love the fact that the women's game continues to produce more and more technical players that Jessica seem uh, the want and the willingness to take people on off the dribble. We were talking about that this year being just so unusual in a good way for the Big 12. And having watched these players for 10 plus years now, I've really seen the evolution of the conference. It used to be known for being very physical, very direct, and that reputation has disappeared. They're very technical, savvy teams now. And you see that in proof of the player awards that we'll talk a little bit about at halftime. Those types of players are super technical, super fast, and uh, right not here. your typical Big 12 players when you think of the Big 12. It's just that entire idea is changing in the terms of type of teams that are here in the conference now. Monica Alvarado with an outstanding career she has had. She wants to extend that career here because with a win they would get in to the NCAA tournament. Here's Alvarado now trying to push the attack. Smith Bonas. Hannah Gilmore, who showed us a, a number of wonderful moments on the ball, will come out for Baylor. Kavacek is your referee here again to reset things here. TCU in purple. Baylor in white. Maddie Quavassier also on for TCU. Carly Summy has come on for Baylor. Determined in midfield is Baylor, and it almost initiates an attack there. That was Carly Davis winning it in the middle third of the field. TCU now, maybe positioned here to get forward. Down a goal. Baylor now flying forward. Klein is going to try and get turned here. And 
defended quite well there despite conceding the corner by Morgan Lane. Baylor coming over to take the corner. Bree Campos out of Centennial, Colorado. Freshman. Movement towards the near post. And the header's off the mark. It'll be a goal kick to TCU. Take a look at how the lone goal was scored in this game. In the 20th minute, Selby Polly produces this. Right over the fingertips of Arnold. Great effort from Arnold there, but off her line just a little bit, was able to allow that ball to dip in behind her in that upper 90. But what a strike from Polly at the top of the box. And what a moment to do it. In the Big 12 Conference Championship, her first goal of the year. Still 1-0 Baylor. Again, these teams, uh, three games in five days, free kick time for TCU now. Anja De Seals called for the foul, number 19 for Baylor. And come in as a defender, a forward, utility player, off the bench for Marcy Jobson and Baylor. Smith Bonas delivery hung up. It's helped on. And off her line to collect Michelle Kloss. It's become steadier and steadier as the year has come on here. 13 shutouts, a single season record at Baylor. Jessica, how has the substitution pattern here uh, sort of affected this game for both teams? Well, I think it's hard when you sub a lot of players at once, like Baylor likes to do. But as you can see here, already pressing with those subs. So they're used to that because that's how they've been doing it all year. I think it'd be different if all of a sudden, now late in the season, because it's hot, you're putting these players in. But these players are used to coming in and providing a spark, providing some energy in the first half. So you see there a great look from outside the box. So I, I think it's not unusual for Baylor to have those types of mass substitutions. That was Summy with a couple of step overs and an attempted finish. Lindsey Schaefer is going to earn a corner. So as we mentioned, set pieces might just be the way back in this game for the Frogs of TCU. Kicking down towards the nine minute mark. Schweiss to take the corner. Baylor 15 straight without a loss. Nice, good delivery. Goalkeeper rooted to her line. And then finally cleared by Baylor. Players strewn all over the box. And Baylor will earn the free kick. Very well-placed corner kick here. You can see Baylor is marking man-to-man, -man, so it's a little bit tougher for TCU to get away from them and try and get something on it. But if they post up Smith Bonas there on the goalkeeper. That's going to be very dangerous because she's 5'11". So anytime they can bend it toward that area, Smith Bonas has a good chance of getting something on it. Long free kick from Taylor Heatherly in the box trying to get turned and defended well there. By TCU, Morgan Lane with an exceptional play there to deny the turn and the shot here as we kick down towards the eight minute mark. 
Still Baylor one, TCU zero. Serena Smith Bonas knocks it forward. She's been given the job of initiating the attack out of the back a number of times here. We've seen her on the ball a lot, Jessica. Yeah, I think they need to move the ball a little bit faster. I think that they're slowing it down a little too much. I think they just need to keep it longer, not necessarily take pace off the ball. So I think knocking it back and forth is a great idea, but if it's too slow, it's hard to push it forward. Maybe this is the chance of the moment here. Long first touch and a finish and a save. So Michelle Kloss answers the first big test of this game for her, denying the run and the opportunity of Madeline Hamm. Great first touch here from Ham, but as you said, Kloss just does a great job sliding out there, chopping off the angle, so really tough for Ham to get it over her body and on frame. Boy, and that's a confidence builder for TCU. They carved out a wonderful chance against Baylor. And they're off the corner now. Alvarado throws her head at it and heads it wide. A great effort from the senior in what she hopes is not her final game. So this is what you want to see is she's wide open on that left side, tons of space. What a great ball from the midfield there, taking her space. And Kloss just does a good job getting out there as soon as possible to cut off that angle. And I said great first touch. Maybe it was a little too long. Yeah, especially with Kloss, who doesn't hesitate. You know, she came off right away. So it'd be different if the goalkeeper stuck on her line a little bit and the angle wasn't quite as bad. Boy, a huge pocket of space has opened up now for Baylor. Step overs, left footed hit, flares off the outside of her foot. But continuing to fire away off the bench is Carly Summy, who uh, is definitely letting us know she's not hesitant to shoot. The Big 12 urges you to stay for our Special Olympics halftime competition. How about that for a player that comes off the bench and stirs the game up? You've got to make the most of your minutes, especially when you're a super sub. You've got to really come out and make those minutes count. You don't have as much time to kind of develop that rhythm, that kind of thing. You just got to come out and put pressure on the opposing goal. Smith Bonas under pressure will go back. comes back in for Baylor. TCU's Madeline Ham battling away in the corner here. Had that wonderful chance. Only to be denied by Michelle Kloss. How about that for a soccer name? Last name Ham. Freshman from Fort Worth. 84 goal scorer in high school. Maddie Clavassier coming off for TCU. Alvarado getting into the box, the Mexican international to try and get ahead on this. TCU off the corner. Good defensive header there. Back in it comes. Dangerous moment here for Kloss. She'll punch it out. Baylor finally clears the area, but TCU again providing some danger. Jordan Hatler was denied there. Good ball out wide here. 25. Hatler tackled again there, timed by Smith Bonas, who's been very, very active. Very dangerous ball, perfect spot. Fortunately, no TCU player there. That was 
Had a clear nice by Wild, but what a strike. Lots of pace on the ball. If you could just get a toe on that and redirect it into the back of the net, I think that's what TC is looking to do. Again, Baylor in white, TCU in purple. Let's go, Sarah! 28 is Summy. Jones and Roland in for TCU. They keep possession off the throw. This one is driven towards the far post over everybody. It'll be a throw into TCU who, quite frankly, if they get out here down a goal, are positioned well, you would think, Jessica, for the second half. I think so. I think that would be great. And I, I'm more encouraged by the level of play. They're really starting to pick it up. They're finding Ham on that left side. They're exploiting those spaces when Baylor pushes numbers forward. They're picking them apart and capitalizing on the little bit of holes that are in the back for Baylor. Remember, they play man to man in the back. You can kind of see there in the back that they're tracking those TCU players. Polly, the goal scorer on the ball now. Plays it out wide. Ball driven in and blocked. And getting in front of that was Rebecca Foreman, who has uh, done a good job of solidifying the left side of the field. Was challenged early by Vic Hoffman. First ever postseason championship match for TCU. Under first year head coach Eric Bell. Trying to get out of this first half, only down a goal. Baylor again pressing. Foreman got a touch on it. Get it out of there, Frogs! Get in the back! Go, Purple! Foreman drives it forward. Goes over the head of Lindsey Schaefer, number 19. Smith Bonus. Pressure, they've won it back. They'll knock it inside, took a deflection, and down to make the play. In a big way is Victoria Arnold. He today clearly needs the big game, and it seems to be living up to it. drama here in the first half in the waning seconds Baylor will go into halftime with a 1-0 lead Sarah Schweiss almost providing the dramatics to freshmen there is your game's goal scorer Selby Polly 20th minute that is the difference well, Baylor has the 1 0 lead here at halftime. Third game in five days for these teams as we hit to the head coach of Baylor, Marcy Jobson. Marcy, uh, thank you very much for joining us here. Uh, clearly, you are facing a very game number eight seed here today in TCU. Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, it's a, it's a tough game out there. There's a lot of fatigue. Um, you know, you can tell on both sides, there's just a lot of, a lot of energy out on the field that is being exhausted minute by minute. And we're trying to use a lot of subs. Um, hopefully that's going to pay off in the second half. We just got to do a little bit better defensively in certain moments where they're getting out. I think um, we just got to do a little bit better in that area. Coach, as the game moves on, they're probably going to start flying some numbers forward to make up that difference. Uh, what do you think you're going to need to do to finish this out? I think we got to finish another one of our chances. Um, we're creating some chances, and, but we're just settling for some bad shots. We're not um, getting a little bit more focus as we go into the goal. So we've, we've got to be a little bit sharper on our finishing. Coach, with the pressure you have on them, is a lot of this game today about what you're doing when you don't have the ball as far as uh, 
being organized in transition when it's lost? Yeah, for sure. And I think we, we need to do a better job of that. They're getting behind us occasionally, and the, they've created some dangerous chances because of that. And we just got to play a little bit better defense and be a little sharper on our finishing. Thank you very much for your time. Best of luck in the second half. Thanks. It's Marcy Jobson, the head coach of Baylor. Former U.S. national team member was on that 2007 World Cup team. Here is your lone goal on this one. Polly in the 20th minute. And the Bears of Baylor are one goal closer to a Big 12 Conference Championship. College basketball tips off in a big way this season. Live from the flight deck of the USS Midway in San Diego, catch Syracuse and SDSU in Battle on the Midway. Friday at 5 p.m. on Fox Sports Arizona Plus. Dish Network claims they have more HD channels than DirecTV. But what Dish doesn't tell you is that 24 of their HD channels are only in high def part of the time. So with Dish, when you turn on your flat screen, you might get HD or you might not. DirecTV now has over 170 HD channels, all in high def all the time. The most full-time HD channels. Another reason 30 million people agree. Don't just watch TV, DirecTV. Attention computer shoppers with past credit problems. If you've had past credit problems and want to make a change, call now. All you need is an active checking account and you're approved for our program. Bankruptcy, liens, divorce, or job loss, it doesn't matter. You're approved. We'll get you that new computer you always wanted and report on your credit so you can start to get it back on track. Call now and with your paid order, we'll add a free color printer, free MP3 music player, and a free LCD TV. You heard right. Free printer, free MP3 player, and a free LCD TV. Call now and tell us where you want your brand new computer and free gift shipped today. Welcome back to the Blossom Soccer Stadium in San Antonio, Texas. Baylor, a 1-0 lead here at halftime over TCU in the Big 12 Conference Tournament Final. Selby Polly, the lone goal in the 20th minute. We'll break. We'll come back with much more here from San Antonio, Texas. For over a hundred years, our alumni have been earning awards like the Nobel Prize, the Pulitzer, Olympic medals, and the Heisman Trophy. But there's no sense limiting yourself just yet. The University of Texas. What starts here changes the world. The University of Kansas awards $50 million in scholarships. Header from Carly Davis, the aggressive defender. Hoffman trying to get turned with the strength and power, but is denied by Foreman. Twice into the feet of Schaefer. Anna Gilmore, Larson, angler run in towards the top of the box. Here's Larson now. Gave it up. Smith Bonas now. Only got one target in front of her and tried to play her wide towards the corner flag. And it'll be Davis now for Baylor. So again, the importance of setting a bit of a tone here early in the second half. It looks like DC is a lot tighter around the box, though. I think they learned from that Selby Polly shot where they allowed her a little too much space. So you saw Larson come across there, great run across the top of the box, but she was guarded very closely. So TCU doing a good job of staying touch tight in and around the 18. And so far, Baylor hasn't had those clear early chances like they did in the first half. Becca Rowland knocked it forward. Ruling tournament started on Wednesday with the quarterfinals. Friday semis. On Sunday, the final. We already know that uh, Baylor is going to advance and get certainly a bid into the NCAA tournament. The only way TCU can get into it is by winning today here in dramatic fashion. It would be considered one of the big upsets all time in Big 12 Conference tournament play. That over the years has been dominated by Texas A&M no longer in the conference and Texas. 
The great clubs like Nebraska and Oklahoma State. Wonderful turn from Slowinski, but over hits her pass now. So a few more unforced errors, and it okay. seems maybe the energy of the game has, has been taken out a little bit here, Jessica. Yeah, it's kind of strange because Coach Jobson talked about it before halftime that she really wanted to keep her foot on that gas pedal and try and get one or two more goals to secure this championship. So Baylor surprisingly not quite at their highest tempo like they were early on in the first half. And especially if they're going to make some substitutions later on, these starters need to make the most of these early on minutes and try and get some more shots on Arnold. TCU has been game and has battled here, and they are on the attack. This is a ball that tries to turn a defense for him and try to push forward here on the left side, and that's a good thing because she's forcing Vic Hoffman to do a bit of defending. Go Baylor! Go Bears! Go Bears! Go Bears! Go look at Hoffman. Go Bears! Very dangerous in the first 10 minutes of this game. Kelly Johnson coming over to take the longer throw. Flick it on. Smith Bonas is in there. She goes down. Baylor will clear the area. Norman put it right back in. Schweiss can't control it. And here's Hoffman with room to run. This could be dangerous here. Because Hoffman is likely going to take somebody on here. Nope, she's going to push a pass into the box, and it's cut out. My TCU's number 15, Morgan Lane, who provided the cover in the middle. Dana Larson will take the corner. The senior. Got this wonderful left foot here. Too wonderful. A little bit too much pace on it to that back post there, but. She can really bend it in, and she'll look to do that. Dynamo returning to the MLS Cup playoffs, sixth time in seven seasons. They knocked Let's off the go! Chicago Fire. Wednesday, game two against Sporting Kansas City. That's a game you'll catch here on uh, Fox Southwest. Also, you can watch game two, uh, like I mentioned, right here. Eddie Robinson and I will have the call on that game live from Livestrong Sporting Park Wednesday at 8 p.m. Experience the excitement. The Dynamo look to capture their third MLS Cup and what a rivalry they have with Sporting Kansas City going on here. TCU right now on the attack. Schaefer tries to square it in, and she was trying to pick out Madeline Hale. Good idea. Larson has won it. Still Larson. Still Larson. Holds it up, will get a shot off, and finally blocked by Morgan Lane, who remained in the play after losing possession. Let's go, Baylor! This is good recovery from Lane, who's just trying to take it down and turn with it, but Larson's on top of her and wins the ball from her, but Lane just sticks with her, stays tight as possible so she can't get a clear shot, and that's what you're gonna have to do against a talented player like Larson, is stay touch tight the whole way and just not give up. Baylor off the corner now. Delivery is hung up in the air. Comes to the top of the box here is Hoffman's shot. Lots of bodies in front. TCU didn't get out. They've kept everybody on side. Larson has a couple hits on it. Two up. Picked out. An ice cold finish from Hannah Gilmore. And it's 2 0 Baylor. This 
this is a lot of what we saw in the semifinal is the tenacity of Baylor. Look how many white jerseys are in and around the box. It's sent back in. What a smart layoff to Larson there at the six. Just calm, and they keep on plugging away, and nobody's on Gilmore. So great job by Larson noticing that her midfielder was wide open there on that back post. TCU victimized by not getting out from being on top of their goalkeeper on that play, keeping a number of people on side. To Baylor, another skilled player producing the goal, Hannah Gilmore, picks up her fifth from Spring, Texas. So the mountain got a little bit higher for TCU to climb now. Smith Bonas drives it forward. So TCU does a great job defensively, but just too many Bayer, Baylor players. They have numbered TCU along that six, and they were able to pop the ball out wide there to Gilmore, who just had to pass it in, and she just passed it into that far post corner. Clearly now TCU will need the game's next goal. Smith Bonas, it's flicked on. Headed down by Heather. Vic Hoffman has found space. Coming inside with Foreman on her. Hoffman, got Gilmore to her right. Still Hoffman. Shot is blocked. Gilmore towards the near post. And the header just off the mark. Smith Bonas defended well against Lewinsky, but you could see the purpose of that delivery hitting the right area. Nice ball in here from Gilmore, and like you said, Smith Bonas just goal side to make sure there's no clear chance for Slowinski there to head that ball back the other direction. Gilmore with her head up. She is so dangerous. Cross coming into the far post and good handling there from Victoria Arnold. The run forward from Michelle Hagen. Alvarado just looks so poised on the ball for TCU. Smith Bonas now. That's a wonderful turn, and it's opened up this run. This is Swice. We ran into two at the top of the box. TCU still has some fight in him. Bravassier trying to get in there, and it's cleared by Baylor. Here's Alvarado now. Set piece now for TCU. We saw them dangerous on this in the first half. Smith Bonas to take it again, Jessica. Or will she? Now she's going into the box and coming over to take it is Rebecca Foreman. So Smith Bonas now becoming a target. Great time to pull one back here and get back into this game. It's a good looking delivery and set it out. Top of the box, Ham had an opportunity. Hagen now, lots of space on the left side for Baylor.
they do have to risk it a little bit more now, don't they? I think that was the game plan was that they're down two, so they've got to risk putting that 5'11 center back into the box. There's just no way you can waste her height at this point, so they're pushing her forward. And you do see them pushing a lot more players up top, trying to press a little bit more against that Baylor back line. And unfortunately, they're just going to have to do that the rest of the match because they're down by two now. And Jessica, we have talked about free kicks maybe being the way back into this game for TCU. We go back to that last play, and uh, again, it uh, provides danger, this delivery. Anytime it's in this area, it's going to be dangerous. Bodies are flying. It's hard to get a hold of the ball, and it might fall to the foot of a TCU player. Yeah, it's not always the initial delivery. It might be that second or third ball that isn't cleared that you get on the end of. Well, you take a lesson from that from Baylor in the semifinal. Both of their goals were from those types of plays. They sent the ball into the box. It wasn't cleared out significantly, and they just put it back into the net. So anything can happen when you just put it into that danger zone. Good look at Lindsay Schaefer, number 19, and she could be the player that leads TCU back into this one by providing a timely goal. We tick down towards the 31-minute mark. It's helped on by... Alvarado and off her line, heavy collision there. Schweiss was in there. Michelle Kloss kept her concentration and will earn the free kick. 2-0 Bell here in the Big 12 Conference Women's Soccer Championship. This is a good look for Kloss here as Schweiss just tries to come in and put pressure on the ball, trying to flick it past her, but Kloss watched the ball the whole way in. Schweiss now. Carly Davis uh, with that quick uh, ability to go lateral wins it. It's Baylor now in possession. Hoffman. With Foreman. Foreman getting absolutely no cover and has worked extremely hard against Hoffman. And comes away with it again. She has grown in stature in the left back position in this game. Think about that, Jessica, because Hoffman in the early stages was having her way with the freshman Rebecca Foreman. That it's a good sign that she sort of fought her way back into this game against a high quality player. And again, Foreman's had to step up and fill in some of that role in the back line with Bobby Clemmer having gone out with an injury in the semifinal. Clemmer, Big 12 newcomer, was really a bright spot in that semifinal against Texas coming out of the back. So Alvarado has been moved back there as well. So they've had to really step it up here in the final. Yeah, injured, not available today. On the turn for Baylor, Alex Klein now, number nine towards the corner flag. He is marked by Morgan Lane. Still Klein. Foreman gets up. Foreman again, and we mentioned the injuries. Mackenzie Cook, ACL. Brittany Sliman out injured. Kristen Bark. Injuries just piling up for Eric Bell and TCU. And these are all key players, and most of them starters. Baylor now will go to the depth of their bench. Hatler comes on. Larissa Campos comes on. You are allowed to re-enter once if you're subbed out in the second half. Becca Rowland comes in for TCU. Quavassier out. Good look there at TCU head coach Eric Bell. TCU was eight, nine, and four. Bell, TCU. During the regular season, one, five, and two in the Big 12. Baylor, 16, one, and four. Five, oh, and three in the Big 12. And right now, number 14 in the nation. The 
coming back to try and help it on. With Ludlow, that shot will go wide. It'll be a goal kick to TCU. You just wonder, Jessica, do they have the energy? Can they can they take it that second gear and, and really produce a few more chances in this one? Maybe get that uh, ever important next goal and then uh, derive some emotion and energy from it. Well, I think Jobson's definitely hoping her deep bench can do that. And you can see Summy really wants to score today as she's taking a lot of shots. But TCU is going to be the bigger question because they don't have, they literally don't have the bench to draw from. They have so many injuries and we're such a thin, you know, mean lineup to begin with in terms of their roster size that unfortunately they don't have a lot of players they can go to to kind of relieve some of that fatigue factor. Smith Bonas to take the free kick. This is the Blossom Soccer Stadium in San Antonio, Texas. They'll play towards the corner flag. Sarah Schweiss is going to earn a corner. So that set piece uh, isolating Schweiss and earns them a corner kick here and an opportunity to maybe nip a, a goal back here and ride a little bit of an emotional high if they can produce something here. Smith Bonas going to stand in front of Michelle Kloss. Towards a penalty spot. Schaefer shot is parried over the top. It was a tester. Kloss just helped it over the crossbar. been a more difficult save than we know. Again off the corner and it doesn't hit the right area. TCU trying to apply some high pressure of their own here. At this moment, Jessica, they look like they've got a lot of uh, energy and emotion invested in it. And numbers. Numbers are huge in terms of pressuring the opposing team's goal. If you just overwhelm them with bodies, you're going to be able to keep it down there a lot longer. Gilmore, and this is a player you want on the ball when you're trying to manage out a game. Anna Gilmore bends it towards the top of the box. It's picked off by Victoria Arnold. Good idea. Good idea. And a number of huge saves against Texas in the semifinal. See you need to get it forward. Serena Smith Bonas. Sarah Schweiss, the freshman, number nine. Goal kick to Baylor, ticking down towards the 23rd minute mark. And boy, psychologically, if you're TCU and you see four fresh players coming in off the bench. It's got to be difficult to handle here because they, they've got very few subs here. Just wave after wave of players coming off the bench for Baylor. That's why you got to make the ball do the work. Not tire yourself out. You've really got to manage your fitness in a game like this and know that you've got to knock it around and be wise about the runs that you make because there isn't someone that's going to come on for you in a few minutes. You've got to make it last. Gilmore puts one over the top. Victoria Arnold, long direct ball, Schweiss is the target. Harley Davis has also been exceptional at the back here today for Baylor. We need to mention that, who headed that away. Really all year for Baylor, she's been one of their top defenders on that left, left back side, the senior. Very much a leader for the squad, not just on the field, but off the field and has earned that Big 12 second team award for her efforts on the field this year. So a quick look there at TCU's Kelly Johnson, who is one of the more emotional leaders 
of TCU, and they could uh, use that emotion now. He'll get called for the foul. It'll be a free kick. Baylor. Foul TCU. Time relative to score, preying on the minds of TCU right now. Down a pair of goals to Baylor. Delivered into the box. Speared out of there. By TCU, here's Swites now. Polly and Gilmore, the goal scorers for that. Head coach Marcy Jobson of Baylor, they have a 2-0 lead here. They're looking to win their first ever Big 12 Women's Conference Tournament title, and that would be a significant accolade in the building of this program for Baylor. Alvarado, nice early ball. And an unforced error gives it away, and it's Baylor again now. Becoming tougher and tougher for TCU. Goes back to her goalkeeper, Arnold. And boy, the fresh players making a difference because they're just allowing TCU very little time on the ball, Jessica. Well, and being physical, too, I think. That's going to make TCU more tired if you're bumping them constantly, you're all over them. Uh, that's really going to wear on this TCU squad as well. Well, here's a good, powerful run forward now. Can they get something out of this? Will be a corner, so uh, that's a positive run down the far right side of the field. It earns them a corner. Lindsey Schaefer was the target again, who's been persistent, certainly in her efforts here today up front. Schweiss will take the corner. Pull a goal back here, maybe you make it interesting. There's the corners on the day. Back TCU has won more than Baylor. Near post. Target was Roland. Shield it, shield it. Kelly Johnson. See and Jessica more and more Monica Alvarado pushing into the attack and uh, for time periods uh, laying in and around that last line of the Baylor defense. You got to think they'll eventually switch to a three back for TCU and just keep her high the whole time. But we're a little over halfway into the second half, so they're wanting her to come back a bit more because Baylor's so good at counterattacking when they do pick up the ball. Alvarado playing as a center back is the leading scorer for TCU with seven goals. She is also a Mexican international. Schweiss knocked it back. Boy, they are just winning these individual battles over and over. Baylor. Especially when it gets into their half of the field. You too, Campos. Larissa Campos with the outside of her foot. That's a nice ball out wide here. Baylor looking for a third, maybe to seal it. Top of the box is Gilmore and trying to hit the volley and over the top it goes. It'll be a goal kick to TCU as we count down towards the 17 minute mark. More changes now for Baylor. Two goals today from Baylor. The first one coming in the 20th minute. 
nice curling shot toward the far post there over Arnold. And again, just tenacious in the box. You see Gilmore doing a great job of just keeping bodies inside that box and trying to make something happen. And Baylor has been known to do that all year long. Gilmore put it away. When you mentioned she just sort of passed it into the side netting was the comment you made earlier when we initially saw that goal. That was a wonderfully taken finish from Hannah Gilmore, who's provided a number of wonderful minutes here tonight, including her fifth goal of the year. I found that's a real hallmark of the top teams in Division I soccer is being calm inside the box, keeping it even in tight spaces, being calm, knowing you can you still pass within that those few feet within the box, and that's just what they did, found the open player, and all she had to do was pass the ball into the goal. Yeah, that calmness uh, at that moment, very impressive. Into the box it comes TCU. They drove it towards the near post. Lindsey Schaefer was in there trying to get on the end of it. Must credit TCU today. They have fought. It is a freshman squad. They are riddled with injury. They were the eighth seed coming into this tournament. They have gotten all the way to the final. And a battle bravely here today against one of the top teams in the country, number 14, Baylor. Eric Bell in his first season has to be happy with the character of his team here today. Where do you go from here? <laughs> first year you're in the final of the Big 12, so. Uh, that's going to really raise expectations and I'm sure be very encouraging for him on the recruiting trail as he can really pull from those strong Dallas area teams as well into that TCU. I know assistant coach Ryan Higginbotham has got an association with those clubs there in the Dallas area. So going to be very encouraging for the future of the TCU program. And you've got to think Marcy Jobson is is really excited about how successful she's been in her five years because this is her first recruiting class that's now seniors at Baylor and she must just think to herself this was the game plan all along to get to this point by the end of that fifth year and uh, they're in the right spot. And the satisfaction of uh, going through it year after year and continued success nothing like it. Gilmore lobs it forward. Smith Bonas got a head on it. TCU in purple again Baylor in white. They're starting to feel that they will win their first ever Big 12 Women's Conference Tournament. They can begin to taste it now here, heading towards the 14-minute mark. TCU still battling away. They square it to the back post. It's through the wall. It's game on here at San Antonio. The header at the back post coming from Lindsey Schaefer. And we will have some excitement here in the final minutes. 14-plus minutes to go. Good example of TCU's mentality all season, which is never giving up, just doing your job, making sure you keep on with it. And you can see as they pushed into the box here on the whip, what a fantastic ball to that far post and a perfect header there by Schaefer. How much energy can TCU derive from this? And, and would this wake Baylor up a little bit? Here is Hoffman now for Baylor. Drives it into the near post. Went through everybody. Wicked whipped in driven cross from Hoffman. See Coach Jobson saying that you gotta want this and that horrible 2-0 lead in soccer that seems to disappear very quickly. You can score within seconds in soccer, so that 2-0 lead can disappear if Baylor doesn't start pressing again. And Schaefer's second goal of the year. Alvarado heads it out for TCU. They want to get it forward again. Roland knocks it forward. Schaefer buzzing around again. They'll go back to their goalkeeper, Michelle Kloss. Bulls have a funny way of making teams react. Gilmore 
Beautiful ball out wide. The idea was good. The execution not. It'll be a throw into TCU. 10 for TCU, number 22. Manny Cavassier for number 25, Zacharola. Cavassier comes back on. There's your goal scorer, Lindsey Schaefer for TCU. Gilmore bounces up quickly, tries to get there, but great work from Alvarado. 76 minute goal has made this interesting. Schaefer scoring in this final is only a freshman. Top of the box, can she bring this down? With Foreman. Foreman again, wonderful defending. It'll be a goal kick, TCU. She has been outstanding. That left back, it's been a great matchup to watch, Jessica. I think being tighter has really helped. It's stopped that burst of speed. Hoffman's not able to get away and uh, go up that sideline uninhibited so it's a good job Foreman's been doing it's staying a lot closer so that Hoffman can't really get that space and talk about that it, it is a game of cat and mouse on how tight you can get with people and and when and how you deny the turn it, it really becomes a very mental game well and it's certain players and you and I have both seen forwards that do better when they're guarded tightly they like using the body to spin off of and get in so post-up players tend to like when players are tight to them. But other players who rely on their speed, they need that space to kind of get their speed up. So uh, a lot of times you want to be tighter to them so they can't do that. Now TCU down a goal, going towards a 10 minute mark. A set piece, Serena Smith Bonas on it. They pulled the goal back here against Mighty Baylor. They play the short one. Schweiss will get a shot off and it will flare wide. And again, uh, interesting because they have played set pieces into the box. This time they're playing short to the feet of skilled players in and around the penalty area like number nine, Sarah Schweiss. And those seem to be a lot more effective. We've seen many service into the box that hasn't really done much and Baylor's able to clear it out and win those headers. So these short balls are causing a little bit more problems as they're opening up lanes and channels inside that box to create something. Hoffman now. Still Hoffman and Foreman coming away there with a wonderful self pass over an opponent. Now with her head up. Needs some movement. And does the wise thing and just puts it towards the corner flag and makes somebody run after it. Gilmore. Space out wide here. Ball squared into the box. Trying to get turned was Klein. Players uh, committed 100% to the tackle here. It's a great effort here. What a goal! Hannah Gilmore gets number two. It is five star entertainment and a goal of class and quality here in a championship game. Well, Gilmore's been my player of the tournament so far. She had a great game in the semifinal against Texas Tech. And like you said, just a perfect finish, just creating a little bit of space for herself, getting her right foot around the ball, curling it in that upper 90, and Arnold can only look at it as it flies past her. Absolutely spectacular goal. Fitting 
for a spectacular performance in this final. From Hannah Gilmore, who now has six on the year. Another head coach, Marcy Jobson, said she's inspirational. There's no doubt about it. And here she is again. She'll play it out wide here. Baylor now leading three to one. Compos, four to one. And it is no doubt now, Baylor is going to win their first Big 12 Conference Tournament final. Gilmore just looked up, saw Campos on the outside. So much space. Look where she hits it from, all the way outside the box. You got to close that down earlier. What a fantastic strike. Campos had earlier scored against TCU in the year, but off a penalty kick. And talk about inspirational. It seems like she got inspired by Gilmore there and won one of her own. And Campos just moved it up the pitch and ripped one. Shooting to thrill, and that's exactly what they've done here today for the Baylor fans. We have seen goals of quality. We've seen a great comeback from a team depleted by injury. That is still continuing to fight. Less than eight minutes left. Michelle Kloss will punt this one over the halfway line. Here is Klein for Baylor. Goals coming a minute apart from Gilmore in the 82nd, Campos in the 83rd. from Victoria Arnold as it was left wonderfully at the top of the box by Lisa Slowinski, who just provided that dummy to allow it to run to Gilmore. Anna Gilmore, Slowinski, Larissa Campos, They've all been dangerous on the attack. Klein now. Klein is going to try a long range hit. That one doesn't miss by much. Second half, there's been absolutely no hesitation to shoot from longer range from Baylor. A lot of this may be coming late with fatigue and getting a little bit extra space in and around the penalty area, but we can't for one second knock the quality of the long range shooting here today. Oh, like you said, holy cow, these shots are <laughs> amazing from that distance. They have so much pace on them from outside the box. So TCU is going to have to close down earlier because Baylor just looks so dangerous, really 35, 40 yards from the goal. Yeah, ball absolutely jumping off their feet. But you know, we always see in college soccer teams that, that do hesitate and, and lack accountability when shooting from long range and, and don't do it. Today we've seen a team that uh, certainly uh, must be making sure that this is an element of their game uh, every time they step on the field. Harley Summy is back on and she was firing away from long range uh, in the first half. Here she comes to the end line. It'll be a corner to Baylor. Well, I think when you see someone who hits it like this from distance and how effective that is, see the smile on her face. Oh, that must feel great to hit a ball like that. But your teammates see that and go, huh, I can do that too. I can hit a ball like that from distance. So they're going to take more chances because they can see that they can beat Arnold with a lot of pace on their strike. By the way, uh, Campos scoring her third of the year. Here is Bree Campos, the freshman. 
Swung into the box again. Fatigue has certainly settled into TCU before they have absolutely shown very well here battling through injury and the amount of depth against the number 14 team in the nation. Two goals coming late here. May not tell the whole story. go to 16 straight without a loss. We head down towards the three minute mark. <laughs> Big tackle on the end line. So TCU will get a corner. They're going to load the box up here. Schweiss will take the corner. Towards a penalty spot. Diving attempt from Alvarado, who's going to finish a very distinguished career. The Mexican international. For TCU, the senior is up front now. Baylor wins it. Lewinsky. Arnold very aware off the line here. Playing it out to the final minute. your takeaway for both of these teams here today, Jessica, both Baylor and TCU? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head with TCU. It's just that it has to be very encouraging for the future of the program. Don't forget that they have a lot of star players hurt right now, injured. And when they have them back next year, it's going to be a very hard team to, to overcome in the Big 12. And I think they're a good example to all the teams, which is you got to keep fighting. Even if you're the number eight seed, it's, there's so much parity in leagues now that you can push and get into the championship game if you perform when it's expected. Baylor on the flip side, I think uh, they're firing in all cylinders on the front side of the ball and the back side in terms of defense and offense. That's got to be really encouraging going into NCAA tournament where they have their best chance to get a top seed, play at home hopefully, and uh, move on deep into the postseason. Monica Alvarado now trying to have one more moment in her college career. Four to one Baylor. Looking to finish off and manage out their first ever Big 12 Conference Tournament win. Alexa! They will get a free kick now. We are less than a minute left in this one. Lindsey Schaefer provided the only goal for TCU today. She's been incessant with her work ethic. But they've been overpowered by a team of depth, skill, strength, and certainly a real will to work for each other. Anna Gilmore has had an outstanding game and Plays this beautiful ball to Larissa Campos now. Campos will hold it up. This one is going to end. Baylor will win their first ever Big 12 Conference Tournament Final. And it is celebration time for the Bears and their head coach, Marcy Jobson. Valiant game effort from TCU, who came into this eight seeded and knocked off the likes of West Virginia and Texas. But it is the Baylor Bears, the 2012 Big 12 champions, first women's soccer title in their school's history. So it's another move forward for the women's soccer program. Victoria Arnold. An outstanding tournament for TCU. <laughs> Baylor 
there win the Big 12 Conference Tournament, and well, there's a traditional dousing of the water. Marcy Jobson and the Bears win the title. Which university did the Department of Defense partner with to help develop new unmanned aerial systems? The same one the National Institutes of Health partnered with to help develop new anthrax antibiotics. And the same one NASA partnered with to help design inflatable space habitats that reduce the effects of zero gravity.